Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in September, uh, Congress rushed to approve $350 billion to prevent what we were told was a doomsday scenario that Secretary Paulson and Chairman Bernanke warned uh, could bring down our financial system. They said if we fail to act uh, to stabilize our financial markets, uh, our banking system could cease to function. Very serious words. And we did act. Now, just last week, we approved $350 billion with an option, if necessary, to commit another $350 billion. Just last week, in a letter to Congress, to members on both sides of the aisle, we were told by Secretary Paulson, and let me quote, we have in fact met, met our original stated objectives, which were to immediately stabilize the financial system by strengthening financial institutions, arresting the wave of financial organization failures, and establishing a basis for recovery. If you recall back then, six of our largest institutions collapsed within a month or two. Now, what began back there in September as an emergency response to stabilize our financial markets has morphed before our very eyes into a string of taxpayer-funded bailouts. Now, I don't think you failed to notice that. I know the American people have not. Trillions of dollars in taxpayer-backed guarantees and loans have been extended over the past five months. Now, a week, a week after Secretary Paulson announced that the September legislation had met its original goals, they're back again. The government and its agents and its agencies are ready and anxious to dole out another $350 billion in what I call a grab bag of free taxpayer money. But before the government and the new Obama administration can spend this additional $350 billion, they are required, required by law to submit a detailed plan telling the Congress just how they intend to spend the taxpayers' money. They are required to tell us not only how they intend to spend it and what they're going to do with it, but there's to go into detail. I would think that means the purpose of each program, the amount of money, the recipients, the amounts, and perhaps whether AIG is included, how much is going to them. At a time when Americans, our families, our constituents are struggling to make ends meet, to make their mortgage payment, that's only fair. We need to be informed. It's a duty we ought to take seriously. We need the facts. We need all the facts, not just some talking points, just not some broad suggestions. Not only do we need to know to look at it as we require them to do, the American people deserve no less. We do know some things. We do know that special interest groups and their lobbyists are lined up to grab their piece of a very expensive taxpayer-funded pie. They're calling on most of us and have this week. They're ready. They're anxious. There's a sense of urgency there. They want a piece of the taxpayer. And we know for sure that Chairman Barney Frank's bill before us today isn't going anywhere. 
with or without amendments. It's not going anywhere. The Senate has repeatedly indicated that they have no intentions of taking it up, much less passing it. Is that my interpretation? No, let me quote the chairman of the Senate Banking Committee. Congress doesn't have time to take up Chairman Frank's plan to spend the money. We've had the Paulson plan, now we've got the Frank plan, and I guess we've got the Obama plan. But the Frank plan is never going to see the light of day. The chairman of the Senate Banking Committee came back. He was asked to clarify, and he again reiterated. He said, trying to flesh out a bill form is really impossible. We just don't have the time to do it. We're not going to do it. Not going to happen. What about the detailed plan required, requiring the administration to tell us how they intend to spend these additional billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayer money? a requirement that was essential in convincing members to vote for the bill in September. We're not going to vote for it. We're not going to pass it unless we get a detailed plan attached to the request telling us where it's going, telling us who's getting it, telling us how much, giving us detailed terms. Well, Mr. Chairman, we don't have that plan. Here is what we have. Here is what's attached to this request for $350 billion. All we have is these 322 words. Mr. Chairman, that's more than a billion dollars per word. And what did we get? We get a document that basically consists of six talking points, some of which sounds good but nothing to inform us or the American people as to how the money will be spent. For example, here's what the plan that was submitted on the request of the Obama administration says. It, and I quote, it will focus resources on measures that achieve goals in the most effective and efficient manner. That sounds pretty good. Let me repeat that. Focus resources on measures that achieve goals in the most effective and efficient manner based on current and forecasted financial market conditions. That's a, you know who that's going to? You know how much? Here's another one. Not many words here, but here are another 10 of them. TARP programs should encourage broad participation. A, to a large number. That's not even close to a detailed plan. Perhaps we're supposed to rely on the incoming administration to provide us with these details of how they will spend the money. They've requested it. Since they, after all, as I said, they re requested the current administration to send this request up, and here's the plan. Nope, nope. The new team, they were going to change things, but apparently not. Same old, same old. They hadn't attached a detailed plan required by Congress for the American people or for this Congress. Instead, they've sent us, not here, but they sent us a three-page letter with five more talking points. So I guess maybe you could take these, which are, are part of the thing we'll vote on, and the five talking points they sent, and actually, they, it was just one of their economic advisors who sent it. And what was the response to that little five-page letter from one of President-elect Obama's advisors? Well, the, Dem the Demo Congressional Democrats said this, it fails to meet our standards. They have said that they needed more details than the letter provided. They've not gotten it. A letter is not a law, and that's why the chairman brought this before the Congress. A letter is not a law, so he brings this bill. But then the Senate said, forget it. 
So here we are three months after the House passed legislation without any clue as to where the money's going with embarrassing consequences, and we are going to do it again. We are at it again. We have not learned a thing. 